So that's how we can run queries across different tables, or one way we can run queries across different tables. What if we wanted to run kind of two queries and join the data together? So let's say, for instance, we wanted to return all players who are either from England or who are cheap, who are less than 5 million in cost. What if we want to return players who match either of those constraints? Okay, so let me just comment this out here. So if we tried it this way, so var q, q dot equal to nationality England, right? And at the same time wrote less than market value 5 million, remember it's multiplied by 1,000, just, just because of my data. What this would return would return the players who are who have a nationality of England and whose market value is less than 5 million. We want to do or. We want to do players who are English or whose market value is less than 5 million. So we do that by actually creating two queries. Let's do two queries. So Q1, let's call it Q1. Let's call it Q2. Two separate queries. Okay. One where the nationality is English and one where the market value is less than 5 million. And then we use a compound query. So let's type it here. So var q is equal to parse query or. Okay. Q1, Q2. So this kind of creates a parent query that's really just saying, give me all the results that you'd get from Q1 from the first query and all of the results you get from the second query. Let's merge these two queries together so you get all the data you get from the first one plus all the data you get from the second one. And then like before, you can just do q.count.then function count and then log that. Let's clear. Oh, clear and run that. Oh, let's refresh the page. And there we go. Found 293 players who are from England or cheap. And we did that by using a compound query, a compound or query. Okay, that's a compound query. Now imagine that we don't have that team code field on the player and we want to find all the players that play for Manchester United. So let's go back to the parse dashboard and let's have a look at our player data. So let's imagine we don't have the team code, but if you actually look at the end, you can see that we have a one-to-one -one relationship between a player and a team. Okay, remember the team pointer? The data type of pointer is a one-to-one -one relationship. So if I click this, it would actually take me to a team, an instance of a team. So this team is, oh, West Bromwich again. So let's go back. Okay. So let's imagine we don't have the team code and we want to essentially run a query through this one-to-one -one field. Okay, how do we actually do that? Well, because that field is an actual instance of a team, we need an instance of a team to run the query. So let's find an instance of a team. So let's load up Manchester United Football Club. Equal to code mu FC. So that's the Manchester United Football Club code. And then we I know there's only only going to be one result, so let's just call q.first, then function team. Okay. Let's just log this, just to make sure this is working. Let's refresh the page, scroll to the bottom, hit run. So there you go, Man U, Manchester United Football Club. So we know it's actually returning the right team data. So now we've got not the code, but an actual instance, an actual record of a team. Let's now run a query on the player. So we can do Q equal to 
team and then the instance of the Manchester United Football Club team right there. So that's different to when we did team code and then we put MUFC. This is an instance of a team. So that's, you can just use the same as before, use equal to. And then let me just copy and paste some code here just, so, just to save a bit of time. Okay, so we find all the players and I'm just going to print their names out on the screen. So let me clear that again, refresh the page and then let's hit run. Okay, here we go. So these are all the players who are in the Manchester United Football Club. So first we load the team, Manchester United Football Club, and then we did an equal to query on the player for the team column. And the team column is a one-to-one -one field to a team instance. And then we passed in the instance of the team and then we just looped through the results and printed out their name on the screen. So that's how you can do a query across a one-to-one a -one field, a, a relation equals query. So we showed you how to solve the expensive teams query by using codes. What if there wasn't codes? What if we just had what these one-to-one -one relationships to other instances? What if we want to use those in our query? Well, again, you can do pretty much exactly the same as we did with the matches key in query field. So let's say we've got this query. Let's say this query returns a list of teams. Instead of matches key in query, we can just say matches query. And so the team code, we say team, and we don't need to pass in a code. So what we're saying here is return all players whose team matches whatever gets returned with this query okay and this query is a query that only returns teams now again let me just clear this refresh the page scroll to the bottom and then hit run so again you see it's returned the same number of results as the other mechanism so if your data sets include pointers to other records, it's usually better to run the matches query mechanism to, to run queries across those tables. Again, you get the same advantages. You only have to run one query. We're just setting up a more complex query. It only actually sends one request to the server. The server runs the expensive teams query and does a contained in and then returns the results back. When well, this case returns count. So if you have pointers, if you have one-to-one -one fields, you want to use matches query. If you don't have one-to-one -one fields and you have something just like team code, you'd want to use the matches key in query constraint. Okay, so we've only really touched upon really only a, a small part of the query language of PARS. It's quite broad. I think I've covered enough for you to get started, including a few of the more advanced topics like the matches key in query or the matches query. Again, I recommend that you go into the API documentation and just click on parse query and you can see there's quite a lot of method names at the bottom. Now we've covered matches key in query, matches query, contained in, ascending. We've matched a couple of them but you can see there's actually quite a few and I do recommend again if you don't have time to actually read through all of the documentation at least take a look at the names of the methods. Just have a, a quick look through them See if any of them stick in your mind later on when you want to try and ask a question of the database. Maybe something will pop up like, oh, it has an ends with. I remember ends with. Let me see if that solves my problem. So just have a quick look through the methods and just see if any of them stick to your head. The one thing I will say is that these queries that look like they involve a location in the world, they're geospatial queries. And we will actually be covering, well, not all of these, but some of these in a lecture later on on geopoints and running geospatial queries in PARS.